to, to sort of speak about Hannah, I, mean, I was wondering if you could begin just by telling me a little bit about your character and how he fits into this TV series. Well, as it turns out, John Carmichael, the character I play, works for the CIA and is instrumental in what happened in season one of Hannah. But you don't meet him until the very beginning of Hannah, too. So, you know, he's in charge of the um, U-Trax program, which is designed to, well, you take a little wolf DNA and you... In, induce an enhancement in the um, in the really in the embryonic stage, so that then you bring up the female, you cull out the males, and then you have a program sixteen years later, where you've trained up um, you know enhanced military assassins. Um, that's what the Utrex program is. That first batch went awry. Hannah escaped. Fifteen years later, we see Hannah come from the woods. Now, because one of the specimens, one of the trainees, one of the test cases is out there, you got to bring her into the meadows where the rest of them are. Um, yeah, I so, mean, it, the, so the program runs clean and we, um, and we uh, protect the status quo. Is there a real benefit coming into a project when you've got a first season to kind of refer to, when you've kind of seen what the tone of the show is and you've kind of, you've, you, you've already had that established? I guess with any project, usually there's a lot of risk attached because you don't know how it's going to turn out. But when you come into the second season of something that already exists, I guess it removes all sense of risk. It's a, precisely that. This is a remarkable example of that. I, I thought through a, a few other times and, you know, since... Uh, I've started doing more like guest star appearances uh, on television shows. You'll join a, a crew of people that are um, really, uh, really crack crew. And in this case, just the way they uh, are able to make this multi international production so smoothly. But really, what you're asking, how does it feel to join a show that's already a hit? That's like a gift. It's a privilege, really. Um, and Joel Kinnaman in that role. Um, set up this part in such a way I, I've, I've never met him but I sure am grateful and then to join the great Marae Enos and Esme Creed Miles who's just this um, in, incredible um, incredible Hannah that she's created uh, remarkable yeah. experience yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, Esme is just brilliant. What was it like? Because obviously, you know, she's she's just become Hannah. I mean, considering that role once belonged to Sir Ronan, for anyone to come in and make it their own is so, um, so incredible. What, what was she like to collaborate with on this project? She seems so committed to the character. She's very committed to the character. Um, and so that reads on the set. I only had the uh, that experience. Uh, you know, there's only those few key scenes where we're actually in the same room. I'm always eyes on her and she knows she's being watched um, innately somehow. Like she has other senses to a certain extent, or maybe it's just that feral canine instinct that I bred into her. Um, she and I are adversaries. She wants to break in to break out. I want to break her in to keep her there and contain her as an asset. Um, it's a really great character added to an already great show. Working with Esme was really um, remarkable. In fact, I learned a lot from her, super committed, but um, you see the work she did on the set best when you see the show put together. So it's incredible um, uh, amount of Hannah that exists on screen. Um, it, it, she's really responsible for that. And she, she Hannah, has become this um, iconic character of uh, youth revolt and um, obviously young female empowerment, but we're a little bit past that, aren't we? Mm -hmm. I mean, we can go deeper. And, and she, you know, Hannah's the one that's trying to break down the walls of these institutions where young women are being told what their identity is. Yeah, it's interesting to hear you say you learn from her because so often we hear younger actors say they're learning from uh, older actors, but it's, it's, it's quite rare to hear it the other way around. But is that the case? Do you find even on a set when the performers are younger than yourself in the leading roles sometimes, do you still find you're learning from, from them as well? Well, I've never had any excess, uh, success uh, like creating a whole set feel. Some people have it um, innately, I suspect Esme does, but... Um, you know, when Hannah's on the set, the set operates in a different way, whether that's the actress or whether that's the role. That's what I'm saying about Esme in this part. Those two, I was, I never had enough personal contact with the actress to be able to discern uh, that. 
So it was really cool to witness. Mm-hmm. And you see the results. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you might not, I don't want to say anymore. It's just really cool when it's all added together, how, uh, how much that character inhabits her and vice versa. And it's become a bit of a cliche to say so, but actors do genuinely say that playing villainous roles can just be a bit more fun. I was wondering about whether you quite enjoy it. And you, can you almost find it quite f- cathartic? Because I guess in when you play a villainous role, you can kind of fulfill certain things and certain feelings that perhaps are within all of us, but we kind of repress them because of society. <laughs> yeah. Uh, gosh, it's such a complicated question. Obviously, it's fun to play the bad guy. Um, and the, this particular character is so well drawn and designed precisely like this. I've really leaned on David Farr as the writer as much as the director to guide me on how to how to make him. Um, there's, there, you know, I didn't want there to be a mystery about him. Uh, you know, I wanted it to be obvious that he's operating within his own diagram of what's right. It's not a question of morals. It's just that that's his job and he's going to see through the this program that's so brilliantly conceived and designed. So then you get deeper in what kind of ego that character has, what experience within the CIA he must have had so that he is either a splinter group or a, you know, really more like a, a nugget within. Um, fascinating story. So that's what kept me occupied uh, when really the physicality of it for me, so unlike Mireille, and Esme as well, but uh, the, he's standing by a window, sitting in front of a computer screen, and yet Hannah, the show, ends up putting that stuff together so that those scenes actually serve as momentum. I couldn't believe it when I watched it. Usually it's the other way around. Obviously, they have great set pieces chased through the subway that I'd, I'd compare to any ever, and... Um, and yet when they cut back to me on the phone for 10 seconds, it, it throws the plot forward. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So my, my final question was just, you, you seem to be an actor that has quite a lot kind of in the pipeline. I was just wondering, are you one of those people that just likes to keep busy? Are you someone that always likes to have a few uh, sort of, fi- uh, of, you know, irons in the fire just to, to keep yourself on your, and sort of to keep testing yourself? Or do you ever just think, God, I quite like a break? <laughs> no, no, I, I don't know. I don't need any kind of break for sure. I think a lot of those were written into my career where I had times where I wasn't working or even things that I'd, I'd think twice about making decisions the way uh, I did then. Um, now that I get much more of a, uh, kick out of going part to part and uh, you know with no pause in sight this has become a very interesting time for that um, but so my assignment in recent years was to quickly get up to speed on a show this was so helpful as you asked you know it was already there the tone the type of piece the temperature um, you know but uh, it's been a fascinating run and a lot of that has happened because of the way uh, platforms like you know streaming services have changed how actors are being utilized so um, it, it's all kind of happened at once I was lucky to be able to flex and um, thank you so much to Amazon for this part uh, for real uh, and um, and you know as TV is peaking uh, you know it, it's it's a fascinating process evolution to be a part of so you see it literally on this show. If you watch that movie and you watch episode one and you watch this, you see how we have more, um, uh, there's more reliability in the audience enjoying things now. Uh, they've tried and now they're true with uh, um, services like Amazon Prime. You know what I mean? It's gone past like the test period to like this shit works. People yeah. are watching everything. <laughs> so it's great to be a part of that for sure brilliant well thank you so much Dom. it'd be a real pleasure and uh, I'll look forward to show. seeing you again soon thanks yeah, see you. thank you take care bye bye thanks appreciate it ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys huh hey, you guys. is that from the Goonies yeah. nice hey you guys.